talk about acquisition now. Aspen is never very quiet for very long. Listen to this. Shareholders of Aspen are advised that the Aspen group of companies have concluded agreements with Nestle SA in respect of the acquisition of certain rights to intellectual property licenses, net assets and shares in the IN, that's uh, infant nutrition businesses, presently conducted by Pfizer. Let's get straight into this now with the CEO of Aspen, and that is Stephen Saad, talking to us from head office and home in KwaZulu-Natal. Stephen, let's go back a bit. What is your history in IN? Okay, so infant nutritionals, I mean, that's really the infant milk formulas. And we've had, we've had a long history, particularly with these brands as well. So we are probably one of two manufacturers in South Africa, aside from Nestle, that make infant milk formulas. We had the S26 range, the ones we're acquiring, and we also have the InfaCare range in South Africa. So um, we've, had a, we've had a long history that's gone back from when we first acquired South African druggists. Um, it's been a little checkered in that okay. we've, had, we've so, had the license and we've had it taken away from us in South Africa, but we bought it for, we bought it for Australia and South Africa, but South Africa is still subject to competition commission approval. All right, well, let's say that the whole thing goes ahead. The point is that you're very familiar with the products. It's, it's, it's part of your uh, group or has been part of your group in the past, and now you're formalizing it. The total purchase consideration is uh, uh, dollars, US dollars, that is 215 uh, million rand. What are the details of the deal? What does it allow you to do in the future? So for, for the next 10 years, we, we can retain the brand and then migrate it to, to whatever brand we, we, we're going to come up with. And then for 10 years, Nestle can't come back with that brand. So it's effectively a lockout. I mean, the competition commissions in South Africa and Australia, uh, Nestle would have too big a market share. And so effectively, you know, they can only come back in 20 years' time with that brand. From our perspective, of course, we, we understand these brands have enough time to migrate them. And more importantly, with a different brand and branding, we could sell the new product into into territories in both sort of you know in our neighbouring areas, which would be Asia and Africa in this instance. Yeah, you talk about the so-called 10-year blackout period and you say effectively uh, you pr it provides Aspen with a 20-year period to establish equivalent Aspen-branded infant nutritional products. Is that what you're intending to do? Yes, we're intending to transition the brand. So we, we've got all the formulas and it will be, a, you know, it starts at S26 and it might go to S25 over a period. But ultimately, the brand would transition into an to an uh, to an Aspen brand, um, and, and and that's really because I mean, understandably, Nestle have got the brand globally, so they're selling it in China and in Latin America and many other territories, and you know, one doesn't really want to share brands globally. You've obviously seen uh, an opportunity here. In the past, some people have said that you've overpaid for things, notably in Australia, but of course you've proved them in, uh, uh, spectacularly wrong. What is the rationale behind this acquisition? Yeah, well, for South Africa, it's relatively, I mean, South Africa, I think it's relatively obvious for those that have followed us. When you've had these products, we're very profitable with these, and it gives us enough critical mass. It fits into our factories. We've really got established infrastructures. So I think South Africa is fairly, fairly easy for Australia. Slightly more broader than looking at Australia. From Australia, we see, I mean, we've got a good business in Australia, as you know, and this gives us quite a lot more presence in consumer business, which doesn't have, um, it doesn't have legislated price decreases, etc. It's not covered by regulators. But more importantly for us, it gives us, you know, we, we're hoping it ultimately give us a foothold into areas like Asia. Um, and trusted, trusted infant milk formula products. I mean, if there's ever a loyalty from any consumer, it's in the, uh, it's in branded products. I mean, you might have seen that there's shortages even in the UK of infant milk formulas because people are taking formula from the UK and sending it to China. So we hope that ultimately we can use this as a base for broader Asian business as well. And also not just branded products, but branded safe products because China's had a problem with uh, infant milk in the past, hasn't it? It has. It, it still has. Is the China market the one that's really the, the, the clincher for this deal? I mean, you've, you've no, spoken no, about the rationale 80, uh, from 80 other territories. 80% of our sales come out of Australia. So it's, it's primarily it's purchased, it fits very well into Australian business. We're fortunate we've got infrastructure in both these territories. That's our primary concern. Where we've seen broader opportunity outside of our territories, uh, in particular, in, in, if I have to pick a uh, geography, it would be in Asia. 
This is the consumer side of the business. Is that something you might be focusing on? You're so well represented uh, elsewhere. Are you looking at other sort of products within that consumer space? We always, you know, we've always had a good um, a good presence in OTC consumer, but uh, I, I suppose it's fair to say in recent times uh, it's been dwarfed by the pharma business. But it's not because it's underperformed, but rather because our, our, our pharma business has overperformed. We particularly like the infant milk formula business. You know, over the years, this is a, a business that we've always enjoyed. It's a very, very tricky business to be in um, from a manufacturing point of view. You take wet milk, you dry it. Uh, you, you have to then compound it, and then at the end you have to test it. It's at a, at a pharmaceutical testing level because obviously giving this to babies, you can't have problems. So I think as soon as the technology starts to rise um, and the barriers to entry are higher, then it's, it's got it's got um, a, a fair amount of interest for Aspen and up because we've got a lot of capability in manufacturing. It's not a massive deal, but it's pretty chunky nonetheless, 215 million US dollars. What sort of material effect is it going to have on your earnings? I, I don't, you know, I'm not sure, you know, I haven't sit and done a calculation on it. It's, it's going to, it will be positive on our earnings. I think that, you know, if you look at the turnovers that we put out there, it's over a billion rand, you know, our returns on that would be, you know, between 20 and 25 percent. I think that's what the, the Nestle returns were. So you can sort of do your own back a cigarette box, you know, on sort of whatever we do, about 5 billion of operating profit. This is, you know, between two and 300 million not going to, you know, even if it's for free, it's not going to make a huge impact on our earnings for now. Stephen, thanks so much for your time this lunchtime. Well done on that acquisition. That's Stephen Saad, the CEO of Aspen Pharmacare.